Assalamu alaikum and good day. So today you will learn chapter 2 descriptive statistic for the second and fourth content 2.3 measures of position and 2.4 descriptive statistic using Excel. So we go to 2.3 first measures of position. Okay, so measures of position describe where a specific data value falls within the data set or its relative position based on percentiles, deciles, and quartiles in comparison with other data value. So measures of position describing the position of the value increasing order. So means that before you find the percentile, decile, or quartile, you need to arrange your data in increasing order. So this is the measures of position and group data. Okay. So first we look at the quartile. So quartiles means that we split data series into four equal parts. For the cell, split data series into 10 equal parts and percentile split data series into 100 parts. We look at the formula for quartile first, okay? So quartile represent to the Q, okay? QI. So QI equal to XIN divided by 4. So this is formula for quartile. So N is the sample data. So I represent to either is number 1, 2 or 3. Either it's the first quarter, second quarter, or third quarter. Okay, then we go to the cell. So the cell split data series into 10. So that's why the formula is x i n divided by 10. And for percentile, x i n divided by 100 because we split data into 100 equal parts. Okay, so note that if c is not a whole number, so round it up to the next whole number. But if C a whole number, then use this formula. Okay, for example, if you get X 3.5. So 3.5 is not a whole number, right? So we need to round it up to the next whole number. So next whole number is a X 4. Okay, same if you get X 2.1. Okay. So rounding up to the next whole number, so next number 2 is x3. Okay, this is for the first one. Okay, this one. But for the second one, if c is a whole number, for example, you calculate, you get x3. This is a whole number, then you need to use this formula. So by using the formula, so it becomes x3 plus x4 divided by then look at example 2.7 here. So the weight in kilogram for standard 3 are recorded as follows. So we have the data and the data is not arranged yet. Okay, so we need to arrange the data okay, in ascending order from smallest to largest. Okay, then find Q1, Q2 and Q3 by using the formula. So I Q1 means that I equal to 1. So, N, we have 11 data set here. So, 1 times 11 divided by 4, we get 2.75. Because of this is decimal places, we round it up to the next whole number. It becomes X3. So, X3 means that the third data. So, the third data is 27. Okay. Same to the Q2 and Q3. Okay, look at the Q2. Q2 because we get 5.5 here. So, we round it up to the next whole number. It become X6. Okay, so if X8.25, round it up to the next whole number. Okay, it become X9. Okay, then show that Q1 equal to P25. Okay, P25, we know that this is percentile. Percentile, 
we divide into 100 equal part. So that's why formula is divide by 100. Then we get x 2.75. Okay, so it becomes x3. x3 equal to 27. So it proven here. Okay, q. Sorry, this is q1. Eh? So this is q1. So q1 equal to p25. Okay, same goes to the example 2.8. Okay, so the first step, you need to arrange the data first. Okay, then find the Q1, Q2, and Q3. Okay, for this one, because of first you calculate the Q1, you get whole number here. So, if you get the whole number, you need to use this formula before you get the final answer. Okay. So we have exercise 2.6 and 2.7. So do all the exercises. So later we will discuss together. Okay. Then we look at interquartile range IQR. So quartiles can be used as a rough measurement of variability. So what is the interquartile range? So define as the difference between Q1 and Q3. So IQR is actually Q3 minus Q1. Okay. So N is the range of the middle of 50% of the data. So IQR I uh, used to identify outliers and to measure variability. Okay. So what is outliers? So later in chapter 3, you will learn about the outliers. Okay, so the smaller the value of IQR, the smaller the variance in the data. So use full to show the variability of the data set. Either it's more variance, more dispersed, more spread, or more consistent. Okay, so this is a measure of position for group data. So same to the previous one. Okay, so group data, it's just your additional knowledge. You can... Uh, look at uh, the, the notes, example and the solution here for your additional knowledge. Okay, So now we go to 2.4, Descriptive Statistics using Excel. So Data Analysis Tools in Microsoft Office Excel 2016. Okay, So before uh, that, make sure in your Excel, you have the data analysis okay so how to do that okay so this is the step okay first okay you open your excel go to file okay and then you choose option okay so next okay you click add in and you click analysis tool pack then click go so after that this table will be appear in your excel okay then choose analysis tool pack okay click on that box and then click ok okay then Okay, go to your Excel, click data, and then you will see data analysis in your Excel. Okay, the data analysis will appear in your Excel. Okay, then if you see the data analysis in your Excel, then that means you can do the analysis with the Microsoft Excel. So how to do analysis with the Microsoft Excel? Okay, first... You need to put the data first, okay? So, in this case, example 1, that one is data we put in a column, okay? By column, okay? Then, after you put the data, okay? Go to data and click the data analysis. So, the tool box here, okay? The box here will be appear. And then you choose descriptive statistic. Okay, then click OK. So that's 
So after that, so this box will be appear in your Excel. Okay, you need to put input range. So click this button. Okay, and then highlight this data. All your data. Okay, and then group. Since our data uh, in column, so we choose column. Okay. Okay, you click the labels in the first row. Okay, here. Okay, and also you click the output range. Okay, so output range. So means that uh, where do you want to uh, put your result? Okay, so for example, this one we put at the same sheet but the place is start with E3. So E3 means that here. Okay, your result will be appear in the same sheet. Okay, so and the last one, tick summary statistic. Okay, so okay, then you will see this one. So this is the data analysis. Okay, of your data. Okay, you can see the Microsoft Excel can give you mean. Okay. Median, mode, standard deviation, uh, the minimum, maximum, and so on. Okay. So we have example 2.10 here. So I want you to try this. Okay. In your laptop. Okay. Try to do the data analysis by using Microsoft Excel. Okay. So, later we will discuss this more deeply in our online class. So, that's all for chapter 2. So, we have finished for chapter 2. So, see you in next chapter. Thank you.